Hi guys, this is Krulli with another pen review and today again I have something fairly unique and very interesting for you right here and what we're going to look uh, at today is a Mont Blanc pen and it is a special Mont Blanc pen because it is the calligraphy curved nib, sort of the second installment of special edition nibs by Mont Blanc in the 146 series because a while ago they had uh, already released a flex nib. This here is a calligraphy curved or fudge or fudge nib. Um, it's been sent to me by our dear friends at Appelboom Pennen in the Netherlands for review. Go check them out uh, if you're interested in that pen. I'm not sure it's still available from Appelbaum. I know that it's uh, it's still available on the Mont Blanc website, if I'm not mistaken. But Appelbaum has provided this pen for review. So thank you very much for that. Very quickly, look at the box. Meisterstück 149 Resin Calligraphy Fountain Pen. AU750 means that this is a... Um, 18 karat gold nib and it says calligraphy fountain pen curved yeah some people call it the calligraphy pen some people call it the curved nib i'm gonna call it the calligraphy curved nib for now pen comes in this box with these calligraphy lines alluding to what you can actually do with this pen which is producing different line width um i need to open that box off camera but you know, it is just your uh, usual Mont Blanc box that you find in there. Um, and then obviously in there was the pen. Uh, it had that, sorry, that was me banging into the camera. It had that sticker here on alluding to the calligraphy lines and then came with a service guide, right? Let's move that out of the way because this is not what we're actually interested in. Uh, what we're interested in is, of course, the pen, but then also this here, Mont Blanc, using your curved nib. Uh, I'll leave it at that so you can pause the video, you know, and read that for yourself. But here's a quick demonstration, right? So, um, as with any fudge nib or fudge nib, you know, cross strokes will produce a broad line, down strokes will produce a fine line, and that is how you get this calligraphy effect. So cross strokes will produce a, 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 approximately a double broad line, a down stroke, kind of like a medium or fine line, right? And then depending on how you angle your nib towards the paper or flip it upside down, uh, it will produce different line width. And of course, I'll show you that now in a second. Uh, here it is, the pen. Uh, it's the one with the yellow gold trim, the 149. Um, obviously, you know, the 146 here for comparison is the smaller uh, brother or the little sister, uh, whatever you like. I won't review the pen in itself in detail because I have a review of the Mont Blanc 149 Meisterstück on my website, on scrivily.org, on YouTube. So you can look at the pen review if you're interested in, in the pen itself there. But just very, very briefly, it's a cigar, cigar shaped pen, has obviously the Mont Blanc logo right here. Precious resin is that what the Mont Blanc calls the resin material. It has this iconic Mont Blanc clip, says then, Meisterstück, Mont Blanc Meisterstück, right here, number 149 on the center band. It's a piston filler, that's why you have a piston turning knob here. And then um, this is the star of the show, which is the nib. It's almost written dry and I've done that on purpose so that I can show you the very nice ink window that allows you to um, sh see how much ink you have left in the pen. And then here, as said, the star of the show, which is this nib, fully gold. There's no plating on it, so it's no uh, duotone nib or anything like that. Um, it says Mont Blanc 18K sort AU750 down there. 4810 for the height of Mont Blanc, the mountain. And then again, these three calligraphic lines that we have already met right here on the box in order to allude to 
the different types of line width that this pen can produce. And if I'll show it to you like that, then you see that this is like yeah, a food gear or fudge nib, an angled nib. That is what the nib looks like, right? And then obviously if you hold the pen in a flat angle, then this whole foot here will touch the paper and produce a very wide line. And if you angle the pen, then it's of course only the tip here touching the paper and you will get a much finer line and you see the nib also sticking out to the top, which means you can actually also flip it around and it'll produce an even finer line in still very smooth writing. And of course, I'll show you the writing in a second. Just once more for you, so you see it in comparison. This is what it looks like beside a 146 Meisterstück. There you go, now oh, they're rolling away. But I think you got it. Um, here you see the difference in nib size between a 146 and a 149. Uh, obviously, comparison of the tips here. And let me just cap it so it doesn't roll away. Here is another 149. A regular 149 with an extra fine nib, bicolor duo tone. As you see, it's exactly the same nib size. Does that obviously, of course, the tipping material is different, and here you see this calligraphy curved nib in a side-by-side -side comparison to a extra fine nib. There you have it. So it's quite a it's quite an Im impressive blob of tipping there and uh, I can do a comparative writing sample perhaps even compared to the extra fine uh, 149 here so that you that you see that price is pretty much comparable to a, a 149 I think on Apple Boom the regular 149 costs around 800 euro 810 maybe and the calligraphy curved nib cost costs or was costing because I'm not sure if they still have it. I think 850. So it's 40 euro more. Obviously it is Mont Blanc's flagship pen and it is like a special pen. So, you know, we don't have to discuss price with Mont Blanc. Either you think it's worth it uh, or you don't. It's a luxury product. Um, this is where we outside the realms of discussing rational pricing, if you will. But let me show you a little bit what this nib can do. Uncap the pen. There you have it. So if you hold the nib at a pretty steep angle, then that is the kind of writing that you get. Uh, if you lower the angle uh, ever so slightly, slightly lower angle, then that's kind of the writing that you get. And uh, if you r lower the angle even more, then that is kind of the writing that you get. And of course, you know, depending on how you're actually holding the pen, you can go anywhere in between uh, what you're seeing on the page right here. If you flip the nib around,
you get an even finer line. I think when you flip the nip around, it's fair to say that, you know, it's kind of compares, comparable to like a fine line. Um, and of course, when you flip the nip around, that's when you're able to actually write with a consistent line. Right? Um, because you don't need to watch out for the angling. When you write with the pen like that, uh, it does take a little bit getting used to in order to actually get a consistent line. Obviously, when you have like a low angle, getting a consistent line isn't that tricky because you don't have to be careful. But when you write with it at an angle, Right, you see that I started with like a kind of medium line and then it got a little bit broader right here. And I did that now, of course, on purpose just to show you that if I start like this and as I write, I just get down and lower the angle just ever so slightly, I'll end up with that. So this is to say that overall, um, it's a pen that needs a little getting used to. In the beginning, oops, that was again me banging into the camera, sorry. Um, in the beginning, when I started writing with this pen, uh, I thought like that this is quite useless for everyday writing. Um, obviously, it's cool for signatures and, and that kind of stuff. But I thought it's kind of useless for everyday writing just because it's, you know, really tricky to, to hold the angle. But then, to be honest, after a little while of writing with it and after a little practice, I reversed my opinion almost to the extent to say this might actually, you know, be... <laughs> I exaggerate a little bit, the only pen you will ever need to carry with you because obviously, you know, once you manage the pen and you know how to play with it and you know how to keep a line kind of constant, you'll actually have like one pen that is able to produce all these different kind of line widths. So you can, you know, use the pen to write bold headings and then like maybe medium size notes and then smaller size bullets or footnotes or something like that. So it's actually pretty fantastic. Obviously, you do get to see a lot of the ink. So if you like to write with lighter inks, such as some oranges or pinks or even yellows, a very fine line will be next to non-visible on the page. And you also don't see a lot of the ink, obviously. Whereas this nib does a fantastic job in letting you enjoy your inks. I promised you a comparison to the regular extra fine nib, so let's do that as well. So here we have the 149 with a regular extra fine nib. That's what that looks like. And now let me bring back the calligraphy curved nib. And first of all, I'll write at the steepest angle. Calligraphy nib, and then I'll flip it around. So there you have it. So without making this into perfect science, uh, I think it's fair to say that when you flip the nib around, you get like an extra fine to fine line, right? It's a bit comparable to the um, extra fine up here. And when you write with uh, the nib in the, uh, you know, in the uh, regular position and at an angle, you end up with somewhere around a fine or medium line. So there you have it. Very, very interesting pen. Uh, if that's something that's interesting you, go and uh, see that you can still snatch one because I believe that as with the calligraphy or the, the other, the flex nib, um, those will at some point be quite hard to get, I can imagine, and they will perhaps uh, own quite a steep price at the pre-loved or secondary market. Thanks a lot once more to our friends at Appelboom in the Netherlands. Go check them out. Thanks for being supportive. 
and thanks for allowing me to play with this pen so that I can show it off to the community out there and everyone that's interested. That's uh, that with this pen. Uh, I hope it was useful and I'll see you at the next preview. Ciao, ciao.